In this video, we're going to investigate a classic physics problem using conservation of mechanical energy. What we'd like to do is figure out what is the minimum speed that I can have in order to safely go around a loop. One way of thinking about this problem is if I was in this cart going around the loop, then in order to safely uh, traverse the most difficult part of the loop, which would be the top, I'm going to have to have some kinetic energy at the top of the loop. I'm going to have to have some speed going this way, right? Uh, in order for me to safely get around that loop, I cannot be motionless at the top of the loop. And so in investigating this problem, you should think what things determine the speed at the top of the loop, what things are determining how much kinetic energy I would have in that cart when I get to the top of the loop. And um, the, the most direct route to solving this problem is to understand that the height, the initial height at the top of the ramp of that cart is going to determine how much energy the cart has and therefore whether or not um, it will have enough energy or enough speed to safely go around the loop. And so the quickest way to solve this problem is to write a conservation of mechanical energy uh, equation where initially the cart is at the top of the ramp and finally the cart is at the top of the loop. And uh, we'll assume that the mechanical energy of the cart earth system is conserved here. And so initially at the top of the ramp, the uh, cart earth system has gravitational potential energy. And the amount of gravitational potential energy the system has is mgh. And when the cart gets to the top of the loop, it not only has to have some minimum amount of kinetic energy, one half mv squared, where v represents the minimum speed that the cart can have in order to go around the top of the loop. It also, uh, the, the cart earth system must also have gravitational potential energy. And it must have that because it's, it's not at the location of h equals zero, it's above that point. And so the question is, how much gravitational potential energy does the cart earth system have at the top of the loop? The mass of the cart is still m, and g is still there, and the last variable in that equation is the height of the cart at that point. And uh, what we need to recognize is that the height of the cart here would be this distance here. From the location where h equals zero, to the location of the cart, which would be equal to twice the radius of the circle or the diameter of the loop. And so that will be 2r, twice the radius. And so the first thing I notice about this equation that I'm writing is that there is a mass in every term which can be canceled. And so this equation will simplify to gh equals one-half v squared plus 2gr. So far I've written this conservation of mechanical energy equation and I've said that the v in this equation represents the minimum speed to traverse the top of this loop but I haven't actually put anything into the equation uh, that fits that that criteria of it being the minimum speed and so how do I plug in something that um, allows us to know that the speed that I'm plugging in is the minimum speed. Um, in order to put that into the equation, I have to look at Newton's second law, which says that the net force acting on the cart would be equal to the cart's mass times the cart's acceleration. And at the moment the cart is at the top of the loop, it must be accelerating because it's moving in a circle. And if the cart's moving in a circle, it must be experiencing a center-seeking or centripetal acceleration. And at that moment, the uh, cart will experience two forces. One of those forces is due to its weight, mg, and one of those forces is a normal force, which is the force from the track exerted on the cart, which is also downwards. 
And what we need to appreciate here, the key insight for this problem, is to recognize that if the cart is going around the loop with the minimum speed possible, then um, the cart would essentially lose contact with the loop at the very top. That would be the condition for the minimum speed. So we should write the Newton's second law equation for the case where the normal force just barely becomes zero. And so here if I say uh, down is positive, then we could write this equation as n plus mg equals m times the centripetal acceleration v squared over r, where r is the radius of the circle that the cart is moving in, which happens to be the radius of the loop. And that's only true because the loop is circular. And if I modify the equation to make n equals 0, I get mg equals mv squared over r, where I'll see that the mass on both sides of the equation cancel, and I see that the speed, the minimum speed, uh, such that the normal force becomes 0 at the top of the ramp, would be equal to the square root of gr. And so if I plug this expression back into my conservation of mechanical energy equation, what I get is gh is equal to 1 half v squared. Now v is equal to the square root of gr, so v squared would just be equal to gr plus 2gr. The next thing that I'll do is I'll notice that there is a g in every term of the equation, which cancels. And so this could be written as h equals 1 half r plus 2r. And so perhaps now you can see why we've, we've taken the effort to write this conservation of mechanical energy equation and the Newton's second law of motion equation, because we get to this point where we have an expression that relates the radius of the loop to the height that the cart has initially. 1 half r plus 2 r is equal to 5 halves, 5 halves r. And the reason why this relationship is important is because it tells us that in order to have the minimum speed to safely go around the loop, the initial height, which determines the speed that it'll have there, has to be equal to 5 halves of the radius of the loop. And so the picture that I've drawn is clearly not to scale because the, the height that the cart has to have has to be 2.5 times greater than the radius of the loop, which doesn't appear to be true. Of course, this equation uh, would be complicated by the fact that on a real roller coaster, there would be uh, perhaps a headwind that would influence this, or frictional forces, which would make the problem a little bit more complicated. But nevertheless, here is a simple relationship uh, that shows that the minimum uh, height that the cart needs to have in order to safely go around the loop, which determines that, that minimum speed, can be calculated in terms of two and a half times the radius the loop that the cart needs to go through.